Welcome to our ship tour of Princess Cruises Crown Princess. Before we begin, please consider hitting that subscribe button for future Princess Cruises videos and a whole bunch of other very exciting stuff coming up real soon. This 3,080 passenger ship was built in 2006 and is the first of three Crown class ships in the Princess fleet, being a modified version of the previously built and smaller by one passenger deck Grand class ships that Princess built between 1998 and 2002, and the subsequent Gem class and Caribbean class in 2004. With me so far? No? Hmm, <laughs> not surprised. Actually, the original Crown class ships were for a time the largest cruise ships in the world. All these very similar looking ships have one thing in common though, divisive looks. I think they're rather ugly, but Helen quite likes them. I mean, I think that boxy rear end is about as elegant as a hippo in a tutu. What do you think? Leave a comment below. And the front? Well, once you've seen what I've seen, it cannot be unseen. Thankfully, the ugliness tends to end there. As with the film Shallow Hal, it doesn't matter what something or someone looks like from the outside, you get to see the beauty within, and here is where we start to realise that the Crown is a beautiful ship. The Piazza is the central focal point of the ship. You can't call it an atrium because it doesn't go all the way up to the top of the ship. It stretches from deck 5 to deck 7 only, and is sandwiched below the passenger decks and therefore makes it a tiny bit claustrophobic. A ship this size deserves more in my opinion, but you know, what do I know, eh? It's still a stunning feature where a lot of the public areas are attached to or can be reached from. Like the art gallery, for instance. Art galleries on ships still bewilder me, but we won't go into that now. Ask me when I've had a few cocktails if you ever bump into me on a ship and I'll tell you. Next to the art gallery is Vines, the wine bar where you can get a selection of wines and also canapes in the evening. Next to that is the future cruise sales area and the internet cafe. Although it's not really a cafe because you can't buy a coffee here. If you want one of those, you have to nip across the piazza to the international cafe. Cafes on any ship always seem to be our favourite places and this is no exception. Good coffees, teas and an incredibly sinful selection of cakes, pastries and snacks await you. Just next door to the cafe is the Michelangelo dining room, one of three main dining rooms on the ship. But as they're all virtually the same, we won't bother to go in there. Up the stairs now onto level 6, or the Fiesta level as Princess calls it, and straight off the piazza is some shops. Calypso Cove and Meridian Bay to be precise. You can't fail to notice Gatsby's Casino in the middle of these. Be gamble aware folks, and as the UK government keeps telling us, when the fun stops, stop. Preach over, and we'll go past the passenger services desk, or concierge if you're feeling posh, and into the second of three dining rooms, the Da Vinci. There's also the Botticelli dining room. We'll be covering the food in detail in our ship review. 
so please subscribe. Up the stairs we go to deck 7, the promenade deck, and there's more shops, namely Essence and Facets, and if you go right to the front of the ship, there's the Princess Theatre, which feels bright, roomy, and you'll get a good view wherever you sit. Tracking back from the theatre towards midships again, and we come to the library, which is small but beautifully traditional looking. Further back into the piazza and the second of our favourite venues, Crooner's Bar, where they serve some fantastic and pretty large cocktails in the evening, set to, yes, you guessed it, a crooner at the piano. Moving further back towards the stern of the ship is the Explorer's Lounge, which hosts live events during sea day afternoons and guests, quizzes and entertainment at night. Further back we go to the Crown Grill, possibly the most prestigious dining venue on the ship. We'll do a proper review of what's on offer here in our ship review, but as this is just a tour, you'll have to wait for that. I promise you though, it will be very good indeed. Right at the back on deck 7 is Club Fusion, which is, well, a nightclub. Fairly obvious really, eh? We're going to walk all the way back now, past the piazza to Facets, the jewellery shop, and opposite that is the Wheelhouse Bar, which is a bar with live music that transforms partly into the Salty Dog Gastro Pub in the evening. Yep, you'll have to wait for the review to see the food here, but we were very impressed. Now we have to get in a lift and bypass the six, yes, six decks of cabins and suites to get to the next public areas at the top of the ship, and it all begins on deck 15, the Lido deck, which has two large swimming pool areas, the first being Neptune's pool. There's a bar here of course, but also opposite the bar is the Salty Dog Grill, which is great for lunch. And here's the bar.
turn yourself around and you'll find coffee and cones, where the ice cream is complimentary, but the coffee isn't. They also do pizza here too, which is complimentary, and they have a speciality flavour of the day every day. Moving rearwards, we have the second pool, the Calypso Pool, which is loomed over by a giant screen, which shows sporting events during the day and movies in the evening. Even further back is Horizon Court and Café Carib, which to me felt like one in the same venue. And this is where the buffet area is for breakfast, lunch and evening meals. It was good, but with one major unsurpassable annoyance, which I'll discuss in our review. Now is not the time. Oh no, it can wait, but I will reveal all I promise. Out the back is Horizon Terrace and the absolutely gorgeous rear pool flanked by this pretty terraced array of small seating and lounging areas. Take the stairs up one deck to deck 16 and through these windows is Sabatini's, the ship's Italian restaurant and Adagio's bar. Using our magic teleporter, or cheap editing trick if you prefer, we're going to jump right to the front of the ship and we come to our favourite outdoor area, the Sanctuary. This is a premium area that comes at a cost and of course we will give you our thoughts in our review, but if you want a one word review, it's this. Lovely. However, the Lotus Spa Pool is free to use and is adult only, so it's a great place to relax and find your inner chi. If you feel like fighting against your chi, whatever that is, the fitness center is just inside and is one of the best equipped gyms we've seen on any ship. Using the teleport again, we jump straight to Skywalker's nightclub, which is in that strange spoiler type thing at the very top and back of the ship. Hmm, <laughs> step down Disney, this is not a Star Wars themed venue despite its name, but it does light up very prettily at night, as you can see here. Okay, just down from Skywalker's are the children's areas, which are, for obvious reasons, not filmed by my good self. So I can only show you the entrances and a little bit of the exterior areas because there was nobody around at the time of filming. Lastly, there's a multi-sports court and a small jogging track on the roof of Skywalkers. Funny how they always have these places nearest to the funnels. Mm -hmm. 
We hope you enjoyed our tour of the public areas of the Crown Princess as we finish off in a very non-public area, the bridge. Coming soon, we have a full review of our cruise on the Crown, so if you've enjoyed it all so far, please hit the like button and subscribe to our little channel for more. Thank you for watching and until the next time, goodbye.